What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're going to be talking about several different horror topics in this video here today. We're going to be talking about Scream 7, a pitch that Jeff Snyder wrote up a while back. We're going to be talking about Smile 2. We're going to be talking about The Blob, which is getting another remake. We're going to be talking about Final Destination 6. And then the last thing, if you haven't been following stuff on social media, I'm going to be sharing some news regarding a very anticipated sequel from the news that's circulating online that if you don't know this might excite you if you're a fan of that original movie but just to start off we'll talk about scream 7 jeff snyder recently wrote up a quick picture idea for where scream 7 could go this is actually late december when the article dropped naturally scream 7 shouldn't be a complete restart in some separate universe or anything like that however what if it explored the fallout from our very first opening victims, Casey Becker and Steve Orth? This was never mentioned in the original, but Snyder proposes you could give Casey a younger sister who is now 40 years old and Ghostface makes her the center of their latest spree. It's revealed that the killer is Steve Orth's brother, who has blamed the Becker family for what happened to Steve for years because he actually warned Steve against dating Casey since it was a bad idea in his eyes to begin with. Just a simple little pitch that Snyder cooked up that I would say is solid. I have my gripes with it because it reminds me of Roman, obviously. It has Roman-like qualities and Scream Season 1-like qualities, but the execution would end up being everything at the end of the day. I think I'd make the goal be framing Casey's sister, who you could say is a true crime nut that became too curious and invested in the media, so she that prompted her to snap because of her consumption of that and all things regarding what she actually had to deal with as it pertains to her own sister being the one involved in some true crime now without being too focused on the fact that it's so roman and scream season one's like would you like to see scream shift to a different family that has ties to ghostface like the beckers it doesn't even have to be in the vein of this pitch if you have another idea of how you could shift course or shift the direction of the story narratively to scream seven what would you do just to keep it within the same universe because the truth of the matter is again spyglass is not currently working to cancel the film they're going to move forward so it's interesting or it will be interesting to see what they cook up because if it's trash i'm just going to come on here and tear it limb from limb not going to be a problem at all now jumping into smile two Lucas Gage has been cast alongside Naomi Scott in Smile 2. We know 100% that Naomi will lead the story in a massive way that could have major implications if executed the way myself and many others anticipated it to be. It could quite literally open the door to endless sequels as long as the series remains profitable. If you saw my video, you know what I'm talking about. And when Paramount decides to announce more of these details, um, it'll just it'll it'll just take it i'll just take it as a massive scoop on my end that's been confirmed at that point lucas's role wasn't revealed in this report from deadline but i expect he'll either have a very small amount of screen time if it's one role in particular that i'm aware of since it will be tied to how naomi becomes trapped by the smile entity or he could be playing one of the other male roles i'm aware of too but we'll have to wait and see filming is supposed to begin later this month in new york what are your thoughts on this casting choice Kyle Gallner is also back as Joel. We also know Rosemary Duet will also round out the cast according to recent reports. Imagine Joel doesn't die, but instead kills someone and passed it to a witness to escape because the expected outcome for Joel obviously is that he's going to be an opening kill. But why not take it down the, ra down the path of the prisoner we saw Rose meet in the last film who killed someone there was a witness and maybe joel gets away with it because he uses some corrupt policing tactics to get out of it and frames the witness maybe or someone else who was nearby we'll just have to wait and see and it would be a nice way just to keep kyle around because kyle really has garnered a lot of i would say fanfare not just because of his contributions to horror but because of what he did in the passenger for people who saw his performance in the passenger i think keeping him around in the smile series could end up being very useful to this sequel Jumping into The Blob, David Bruckner is attached to write and direct a reimagining of The Blob for Warner Brothers Discovery. This was reported by The Wrap, and like with other reports, this wasn't well received by some. Honestly, this would be the second remake, I think, because Beware The Blob was actually a sequel to the original movie. If it wasn't, correct me, but I think that was a sequel. Shanice, uh, Shanice Smith's remake was in 1988, and that's The Blob that I grew up on, and I've always wanted to see some sort of sequel to that. My fingers are crossed that David Bruckner, who has impressed me over and over and over again, especially with films like The Ritual and The Night House. God, The Ritual was so good. I might need to revisit that soon. 
I just have my fingers crossed that this reimagining is actually some sort of loose sequel set several years later after the crazy pastor at the end of the first film set the blob loose. So you could have Shawnee Smith obviously make a cameo appearance if that's the case. And it could still be a loose, a loose type of remake because of the fact that it's set so many years later after the pastor did what he did. The blob is massive compared to what we've seen in past films. And it has greatly affected society. Just think about the implications you could have from a film like that. Um, Final Destination 6 is rumored to be filming from March until May in Vancouver. This comes from Production Weekly, which has been correct in the past. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens going forward. We know it will revolve around Stephanie, who must work to keep herself and her bloodline alive. Once they become Death's new targets, it's connected to their grandmother saving several lives from a tower collapse dec decades ago. And Death has finally made its way back to them. My prediction still remains that the Final Destination 1 through 5 will be dealing with families connected to this tower collapse that's been presented for 6. And that's how all 6 of these movies will be connected. And that's how the upcoming 6th film will remain a sequel. Our first sequel since 2009, I think. Because I think the last film was a prequel to the first movie? Or happening simultaneously? I think it was a prequel. Now, the last thing here, talk about this sequel that probably many of you never thought you would hear about. I, d I touched on it br very briefly. And one of you actually said, I can't just mention a sequel to that movie and then keep going. But it's back. Sorority Row 2 apparently is currently being written. This is coming from Josh Stolberg. Cassidy and Ellie are being included as returning characters as well. Again, this comes directly from Josh Stolberg, who was talking about this last night on Twitter. He previously teased this film was in the works, but now we have him directly talking about it and basically confirming it. I never was a massive fan of Sorority Row, but it was another one of those slashers I didn't mind revisiting once I saw it back when it originally dropped. I was starting to get into girls more at the time, and it was just a pretty good film for the most part. I remember it gained more popularity thanks to the Ren is A theories that went viral in the mid-2010s, and that's when I revisited the movie too. So it seems like Sorority Row 2 is indeed why we have new creatives for Saw 11, but hopefully Sorority Row 2 can live up to what we got in that film from 2009 i think because i remember i saw it when it first dropped i think it's from 2009 i have to revisit that film too what do you guys think about all this let me know down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification in this video in the description i'll link some of social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video